All right. Uh, good morning. My name is Sean Roberts. Uh, I am Chief Technologist for Lincoln Network, and this is Lincoln Shorts. I have with me Justin Roebuck uh, from the state of Michigan. He is the Ottawa County Clerk Register. Uh, thank you for joining us, Justin. Um, uh, we're asking a series of questions about the perspective of the voter, and, and here's uh, the next uh, question. Uh, what should the voter do if the voting center or polling place is congested, meaning long lines? And um, it, there's a lot of concern from some people because of uh, COVID fears in various localities that it will appear like it's congested just because of uh, physical spacing and people in the line. So what Absolutely. Should yeah, that's definitely a concern that we're hearing raised, you know, uh, by our voters as well right now as we're leading into this election in, in just a few short weeks. I think uh, you, you hit on it earlier, the COVID issue is a paramount concern in terms of the congestion as well, because of the fact that we're, you know, intentionally physically distancing from one another within the precincts. So that's automatically going to lengthen the line. You know, we hope that the, the timing there won't be lengthened just because of the physical distance, but obviously the line is going to be lengthened. But then we're also sanitizing things within the precinct. We're, we're cleaning voting booths. After their uh, after their use by voters, and so there's elements of literally just in in the course of the pandemic and what we have to do in order to make things safe in the precincts for our workers and for our voters. Um, there very well may be longer lines and more congestion. So I think the first thing for voters to recognize is the fact that that this may be an occurrence that um, that you're going to see. This is not going to be. Uh, atypical or exceptional for you to see some congestion in the precincts on election day. The good news is in Michigan, we have a couple of solutions for that. In Michigan, you have the ability to vote an absentee ballot um, without a reason. So, uh, you know, essentially, if you're concerned about this in advance of the election and you'd like to go in and get a ballot, you can go in any time up until the election uh, to receive a ballot from your local clerk. Uh, you can vote that ballot even in the clerk's office, put it in an envelope, get sealed up and maintained until election day where that ballot is processed. So there's always the option of voting absentee. You can either do that by mail or you can actually vote absentee in person before the election as well. Um, but I think that the- oh, I'm sorry, the do you have early voting in, uh, um, in the Michigan as well? So we don't have early voting in the context that um, you know, it's, it's understood in most states where essentially a voter walks into a polling place and they insert a ballot into a tabulating device prior to the election. Okay. So you can vote early, you can participate in that process early, but your ballot gets sealed up into an envelope and then is considered an absentee ballot that gets processed on election day, if that makes sense. Right. And, and that's a, an excellent point that uh, it sounds like by uh, probably by law, it is in most places where this is the, the rule, um, that you're un, uh, unable to start processing the ballots uh, before election day. Is that accurate? That is correct. Yeah. So in, in Michigan, we actually just had a very recent law change. It was signed by the governor last week that would allow some of our larger communities, uh, population of 25,000 and over, uh, so some of the larger suburban and certainly more urban communities within the state of Michigan can begin to process, can carry out certain processing functions, but not actually tabulate ballots on the Monday before election. So it's interesting. A lot of states, you can process ballots much earlier than election day, but here in Michigan, we're, we kind of have that. Those I would parameters. assume the first stage of that processing would be signature verification. Um, yes. And the signature verification happens in Michigan um, at the local clerk's office. Mm -hmm. So uh, city and township um, jurisdictions, when the ballots come back from the voter, the signatures are um, verified on, on site prior to the election. So signature verification is not happening on election day necessarily. It's happening in advance as the ballots are coming back um, into the local clerk's office. Oh, you mean that's that's happening automatically? That first first step that's traditionally happened as soon as it's received, they verify, um, try to yes, link them up and register voter. Exactly, and the reason for that is we want to make sure that any potential issues there can be cured prior to the election. So, for example, right. if a voter forgot to sign the ballot, uh, or if the signature does not match what is uh, on file at the local clerk's office, 
we want to give that voter as much opportunity as possible to uh, cure that problem before election day when the ballot needs to be counted. This is a little bit of a tangent, but uh, I'll, I'll yeah. go there. Um, so, um, uh, the so if I forget to uh, sign my ballot, my absentee ballot, being more specific, um, and uh, in the attempts to cure it, which uh, sometimes is called adjudication, uh, yep. uh, meaning that it's it's not incredibly clear um, what the voter's intent is. There's something hindering right. the voter's intent um, that uh, would would that be a normal adjudication process, meaning that uh, the somebody in the clerk's office would actually reach out to that voter and say, hey, you forgot to sign, rather than it just being rejected? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, so it's, it's um, the process is essentially, we, we reach out to the voter by whatever means of communication they've provided us. Ideally, that would be an email or a phone number, obviously, because of the timing constraints. Um, but a phone and email are obviously not officially required on the application in Michigan, you have to apply first for an absentee ballot before you receive one. Um, and so uh, we always encourage our voters to provide that additional step of information, but otherwise we're actually physically mailing them a letter stating, um, you know, there's an issue with your signature. We don't believe it matches what's on file or perhaps you forgot to sign the back of the envelope. Um, those issues are always, we're always reaching out to the voter first uh, even even toward the very end, um, you know, as it as it becomes closer and closer to election day, we're still making that effort to make sure we're contacting the voter. So, is there a finite period of time um, of adjudication? Um, is there a, a a date which you must certify the election results by? So, the certification of the election results themselves uh, is a fourteen day window in Michigan. Okay. So, it's a fourteen day statutory window. Uh, including, um, you know, it's 14 calendar days. So obviously we'd be including the weekends if necessary mm. um, to get the certification of the election done. As far as adjudication of the actual voter ballots, uh, the, the signature issues or whatever uh, issues may come up, um, uh, there's not a specific window of time for that. Uh, voters are required, excuse me, clerks are required to have ballots available 40 days in advance of the election. And so okay. during that 40 day window, at any time in that window, voters can obviously return those ballots and they would be adjudicated during those times, the signature issues, ballots never being opened, of course, the envelopes never being opened, but the uh, potential problems with uh, signatures could certainly be adjudicated any time during that window. That 40 day window. Excellent. Well, I, I think we... We completely exhausted that topic. That was very, again, very, uh, very comprehensive. Thank you. Um, okay, well, this has been Lincoln Shorts. So